Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are shortly finishing up our multiplication of decimals. We'll be moving on to prime and composite numbers, and we'll be putting that away so that we don't get in trouble. Now, as we begin our multiplication of decimals, we're going to talk about a few things before we actually do the problem. First thing, I want to look at the first problem, 70 times 12 hundredths. Now, is my answer going to be less than or greater than 70? Uh, less. less. So my answer is going to be less than 70. Is it going to be less than, greater than, or equal to 35? Half of 70 would be 35, right? Am I multiplying by... A half, more than a half, or less than a half? Less, less, less than a half. So I know my answer is going to be less than 35. Now that's a pretty good estimate. It helps me figure out where I'm going to put my decimal point. So it's always important to do that. Now let me ask Leo, how many numbers are going to be behind my decimal point in my product? Two. Two. Because there are two in the answer. That means there needs to be two decimals behind, or two numbers behind decimals. Two numbers, that's not a hashtag, that's the old, back when I was a kid it was a number sign. So behind decimal. Point. Okay, I've done all that and I haven't done any multiplication whatsoever. This gives me a lot of insight and information on how I want to do this. Is 12 hundredths closer to 1 half or to 0? Zero? Zero. Closer to 0. So it's going to bring this number way down. It's going to bring it way down. All right. When I'm multiplying and the factors have decimals in them, I ignore the decimals. So I'm going to multiply 12 times 70. Now the cray cray thing is, I don't have to multiply times this zero all the way through because that's going to put a zero in the ones place no matter what I do. Let's see. If I multiplied my zero through, I'm going to get zero, zero. Then, since I'm starting in my tens place, i got to get zero, which means my ones place here is going to have a zero no matter what. So I like to just start, since I'm starting my multiplication in the tens place, I like to put it there. Then I just have to do 7 times 2, which is 14. 14. Eight, Carry my 1. Eight. 7 times 1 is? 7. Plus one more? Eight. 8. How many numbers did I say had to be behind my decimal point? 2. Eight point Another way to write that? Eight and four tenths. Eight and four tenths. Or, yeah, eight and four tenths so it can also be written like that. I mean, which that could be simplified, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're not going to worry about that right now. Oh, we are starting them soon. All right. Now we have our next problem. Nine and eight tenths times four and seven tenths. I want to estimate first. I want to estimate first. So, Allie, we have nine and eight tenths and four and seven tenths. Can you help me estimate what should it? What should I maybe do? Okay. Okay. So my estimate should be around fifty, probably. Less than 50, since I changed both these factors, I rounded them up. Allie, how many numbers are going to be behind my decimal point in my product? Two, because there are two numbers behind my decimal point in my problem. That means there has to be two decimal or two numbers behind my decimal point in my answer. So there needs to be two. All right. Now, when I'm multiplying decimals, I do it without even looking at the decimal points. 
when I'm doing my actual work, I could do the standard algorithm, I could do the box thing, I could do the lattice, I could do all sorts of different ways. Whatever's easiest for you is what I want you to use. Then we have 7 times 8, which is 56. And I have 7 times 9, which is 68. Plus 5 more. 68. 68. Now I'm going to the tens place. So 4 times 8 is 32. 32. 4 times 9 is 36. Plus the extra 3 I carried over. 39. Then I add, I get 6, I get 10, I get uh, 16, 4. So where does my decimal point go? Bree, where does my decimal point go? Forty-six and six hundred. Is that? Does my estimate say that that probably is correct? Yeah. Yeah. My estimate says it's probably correct. We had it fifty. We said. It was going to be less than 50 because we rounded these both up. Well, Allie helped me round them both up. Way to go, Allie. All right, we have 99 hundredths times 61 hundredths. 99 hundredths times 61 hundredths. All right, so what do you help me here? Um, well, you can round 99 to 1 and 61 to 1, so it would be like 1 times 1. Okay, so my answer is going to be somewhere around 1. 1. Yeah, Big, greater yeah. than or less than 1? Less than. less than 1. My answer is going to be less than 1 because I'm multiplying by numbers that are less than 1. Multiplying by numbers that are less than 1. Layla, how many numbers behind my decimal point in my answer? Four. There's two behind it here and two behind it here. So there's four numbers behind my decimal point in the problem. So I know it's going to be less than the one with four numbers behind my decimal point. Now I just multiply it like it's a normal number. Anybody have an idea why I use my second factor as 99 and not my top number? Anybody have any idea? You want to know why I do it? Because I can just, whatever I get the first time, I can just put a zero and get it the second time. I mean, I'm multiplying by nine twice. Nine times one is? Nine. Nine times six is? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Now, when I multiply nine through again, I'm going to get five, four, and nine. But I still have to put my zero there. And so I'm going to hit nine, four, five. That is why I organized the problem the way I did and put my 99 as my second factor. Because it really makes, this, makes it much easier for me to understand. Now I add these two products together. I get 9, I get 13, I get 10, carry the 1, I get 6. And Layla, how many numbers were behind the decimal point? 4. And I said my answer had to be less than 1. So, so 600 or 6,039 ten thousandths is my answer. Now, if you listened, before I went over these three, I said later today, you're going to get 10 problems that you're going to have to do, and you're going to turn into me by Friday. Now, I've already done three of them in my first class, posted it to the tube of you. I just did three of them in this class, posted it to the tube of you, or will post to the tube of you. And I'm going to do three more in my last class. You only have 10 problems. If you get below a 90, I can call home and go, ring, ring. Hello, is this a parent? Oh, good. I want to say that your child was being lazy, which is why he failed that assignment. What do you, what do I mean he's being lazy? I gave him nine of the answers. There were only 10 problems. I mean, if Mr. McMurdo gives you nine of the answers and you miss more than one, that tells me you're lay lazy. Don't be lay lazy. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're gonna bring me a milkshake? Oh, I love milkshakes. I wish more students and parents were like you and thought of me to bring me milkshakes. 
Okay. Yes, chocolate would be the best. Can I have a milkshake? All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Boom, shakalaka, peace out. God bless. Love you. Do some kind today. Save the bees. Please subscribe. Share it with your friends all over the world.